Hello and payback is finally done. Welcome to another coding update. Today um, we have a great, or I have a great milestone to celebrate kind of. Um, so yay! Um, the topic that I pushed back for some time um, because it was a lot of, I expected it to be a lot of logic to extract and everything um, is finally done in some way. Um, let's talk about the details in a minute. Um, I'm talking about the loan payback. So paying back the loans in the collaterals with balances or um, with swapping collaterals. Uh, what, what happened? Um, on the one hand, this extracting the logic happened in a way um, because after a lot of back and forth and it was quite yeah um, exhausting, say it this way, um, to do that because there was there is a lot of logic in there and a lot of special cases depending on what fork hate you are already and everything because this whole loan system um, had a lot of iterations during the last um, yeah um, updates and I realized after some um, yeah fruitless tries that I it doesn't make sense to extract this. Um, um, logic in the handling of the payback message to extract that into a generic method and then reuse it here because here is a quite different use case and with all the special cases and handling in there it's really complex um, to add that and it adds a lot of complexity and therefore yeah yeah risk that um, some error gets in if you adapt the normal um, message or normal behavior so i just extracted the logic out um, just for the case that i need um, so I can easily adapt that and don't have to worry about the whole thing all the time. So basically this happened. Um, with that, the paying back with the balances um, is also um, done. And then this, um, the whole thing about using collateral to pay back the loan started. And there, um, I think it, uh, I talked about it already, um, but there, I decided to do in my implementation and do it that way that if there is a need to use collateral to pay back, I first use DUSD, uh, DUSD collateral for the D token loans. Um, for the DUSD loans, it's already in the um, unlooping. Um, and there I don't use it in a way that we swap DUSD to the D token, but directly burn the DUSD in the same value um, compared to the Oracle. So with the Oracle price, no penalty, directly the USD value, so one to one. Um, the value of the loan burn the USD accordingly and um, um, yeah, pay back the loan. And I do this um, because I think that we have a high risk if um, we um, use the DUSD detoken pools, which sometimes have really low liquidity. If we use them to pay back the loans or to swap to pay back the loans, they might go into a massive premium um, and you might even get to the point where you can't um, pay back the loan because you don't get enough detokens out of the pool um, or at a, with the DUSD that you get in. So it's getting into a 50% premium or something. And within the pool a token system, the D-token system, uh, if we burn DUSD and those were algo DUSD, we burn and basically after we um, removed all the DUSD loans, um, those are algo DUSD. Um, so we burn algo DUSD and therefore kind of create the D-token, algo, algo D tokens in that case. So we swap algo DUSD for um, D algo D tokens. Uh, because the D tokens had the uh, loan and we remove algo DUSD and use them to pay back the loan. So there is no difference in the algo ratio or in the algo balance basically. Um, but we don't run the risk of getting completely into premium and shooting the pools out of the um, um, yeah, valid range or anything. Um, so there is no swapping from DUSD to the D tokens. Um, but and but only direct burn so use the DUSD directly collateral directly burn the DUSD for the loan um, so that's happening and also uh, for all collaterals that have a direct pool so basically the gateway stuff um, so in our current mainnet the DFI USDD USDC EUC um, they all 
have um, the, the all I already used that I say, okay, um, take that collateral, swap it to the USD, and then burn the USD for the loan. And that is, yeah, the um, done also in a way. Um, so that's also something that was some took some time because it's it wouldn't be fair to say I go pool by uh, uh, volt by volt and swap the first volt, swap the DFI to the USD, pay it back, then the second one, and so on, because then the first volt gets a far better price than the last one. So what I actually do is I take all the um, volts that have this collateral, so in the first case DFI, um, and have loans open. I see what amount of DUSD is needed based on the oracle and everything. I can say what amount of DUSD is needed. Um, take that DUSD, check, um, sum that up um, over all the um, volts, um, sum up what amount of this collateral, so DFI, is available in all those volts, um, and then see. Um, how I can swap it, so all DFI at once, swap it to DSD that I get that, and there is some I need to have, it's it's not that straightforward, because in the end you don't know if all the volts have enough DFI to get the DSD needed. So it could be that you need from one volt, if you use all the DFI from that volt, you get not enough DSD, um, even if you swap it at the best average price. Um, so it's in the sum, it's wrongly reflected. And the other hand, on the other hand, um, it could be that if you swap all the DFI that you have in there, you would get too much DUSD for this volt that it needs. So it's you actually should swap less DFI than they are in the collateral. Um, so there is a bit of a thing. How I solved it um, for now is that I first sum up all the DUSD or all the USD requirement and say, okay. If I, so I do a backward calculation, let's say if I want to get that amount of DUSD out of this pool, how much DFI would I, also, so collateral, in this case now DFI, how much DFI would I need to swap in? Um, there, with that, I get the maximum um, volume of swap that could happen, and therefore the maximum slippage, so the worst price, basically. And with this worst price, I then iterate over all the volts with that collateral and everything and say, okay, um, if I now use this worst price to get this uh, the needed DUSD, how much DFI would I need? If there is enough DFI for that in there, I use that amount of DFI that I have and now sum up the amount, the real amount of DFI that I would use from each pool, uh, from each volt. And if I don't have that amount of DFI, I take some only the amount of DFI that I have sum that up, now I have a sum of used DFI from the collaterals, and now I simulate a swap of this um, and get another price. So it's a bit less price because I use the maximum amount of DFI in the volts with this, so with this maximum slippage, that amount of DFI. Um, that could be now less DFI than I would have used for the all the DUSD um, because of the limiting factors. Um, so I get a bit, likely a bit less slippage um, and a better price, but it's still the correct amount that I, um, because it's the maximum amount of DFI that I would swap. Um, and do that again with the new price and do three iterations there to get close to the correct and real price. And, but get definitely enough DUSD because I'm coming from the upper side and get definitely enough DF, uh, DUSD to pay back. Um, so I go in and swap that. So oh, I um, iterate that, uh, I think, two times over the volts um, to get the price to a, a good um, ratio. Then do this swap. So take all the DFI that are that I counted, all those DFI out of the uh, pools, uh, out of the volts, into um, the smart contract address. In this case, swap it into the smart in the smart contract address. Then move the resulting the um, according ratio for each volt of the DUSD, resulting DUSD back into the um, uh, collateral, pay back with the collateral and burn the, if there's any small um, accounting um, error or slippage from the slippage calculation, if there's a small um, um, error or a small excess DUSD, those DUSD are burned as yeah, slippage fee, basically. Um, and that's, that's that. Um, for now, I only um, 
um, uh, consider the commission in those simulations. Um, I don't consider the f any fees. Um, for buying the USD, we don't have any fees, but to be correct, um, uh, we would need to also consider those fees in those pools. Um, so that's a to-do in the, in the pool list. Um, but that's what's happening um, right now. To, so swapping DFI or collaterals to DUSD to pay back is already in there. What's still missing, um, so that's that. What's still missing is the question of other crypto. So for example, if you now have um, a BTC or something where you don't have a direct payer um, from the collateral to DUSD, um, there the calculation um, needs to be um, yeah, increased or um, extended to also um, be able to calculate composite swaps across two pools. And then if we, if we have that, so that's the last point here, if that is done, then this whole payback is finally done. And then we can um, do um, next steps would be this at the government attribute for the release ratio. Um, we need to see how to do that and how to make it in a way that it's only read only. And then have, um, where is it? Have this create transaction to release the tranche. Um, and with that, I mean, this banning auctions is still something to check. Um, but if that and that is basically done, or, and that is done, then basically most of the logic for the main functionality is done or will be done. And then it's only a topic of handling the test cases during the normal um, yeah, usage. And they are also in there. So with that, um, there's a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of progress happening. Um, let's quickly jump into the code so that you also see um, what's happening there. Um, I think I will go quickly through that because I already talked about it um, now. But yeah, anyway, so you see it. Um, first thing, the test that I written before, I had to adapt it a bit because the real numbers are now in, um, or numbers based on how it's done right now with the swapping and everything. Um, but now those te this test is now green. So all the things that I had in the test before are now correct, um, correctly working. So yay. But we definitely need to add more test cases um, to cover all the other things because it's not all done yet. So the test should not be green, but the things that are covered in the test are done. Um, so what happened in the code? Uh, okay, first maybe a look into the thing that I wanted to um, extract, uh, which is this um, um, handling of the loan payback loan v2 message, which is v2 because it allows to pay back with other collateral um, or with other tokens. Um, so payback with the USD, for example, um, payback had the token loan with the USD. And thanks to that, I could expect that, um, that logic um, directly. There's a lot um, of error handling and everything. And then you have this um, iterate over the tokens that you want to pay back and iterate over the um, loans, um, the, the token IDs that should be back and uh, with the um, tokens, uh, coins that you want to use to pay, pay it back, then get the price and you see there is a lot of, um, is it even allowed to pay back? Is there a penalty? What's the penalty for paying back with this token? Because in the original code, there is a, you can define the fee and everything. And you would need to make sure that this is overridden. So, or ignored. And you can also not only pay back with DUSD, but also with uh, DFI or anything here. So um, there's a lot of special handling. What's if that um, penalty is and everything. Um, and yeah, that's a lot of things to make sure that it's correctly. Also, it always takes it from the account. Um, so in our case, it would mean you would have to move the DUSD from the collateral to the account, then use this method and make sure that everything's correct because it also um, only uses the amount that's needed. So you need to know how much you have to transfer to the account, um, make no error there. And it's all for any token to pay back um, uh, as long as you have a um, valid price and everything. Um, so, and then also this calculation here with the, yeah, what interest rates, if am I already past those um, 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 hard fork blocks and everything. Uh, so over time I was like, this is a lot of um, handling, a lot of special case handling, 
a lot of logic in there. Um, again here, all the case if you use the DFI. And if you add here the thing that you want to bypass some of the things, um, like here we um, it swaps to um, the, the minted, the, the interest rates um, swaps it and stuff like that. And to bypass all that, expect that it would be a lot of um, topics, a lot of things that don't happen in, in this case. So I decided to ignore that, um, well, not ignore that, take the parts of the code that I want, as I said, and use it. So in our force close all loans, um, what is happening? I basically, um, this unlooping, um, we already had before, and here we now have the paying back. Um, I do the direct payback and not um, within the for each, um, because I'm not sure how paying it back within the for each would affect the um, for each itself. So if there is some error then in the iterators, if the pool um, is the vault changes or something. Um, so uh, in here, I just say, okay, I have the direct payback um, vector goes over that and check the always for each balance in the for each token bal alone balance um, get the balance of the owner um, uh, for this token ID and if the owner has the balance then um, put it into the vector to say okay this owner this vault ID wants to pay back that amount of the token and then I just iterate over that afterwards and say payback loan with token or collateral um, with the fuse owner voltage the, the amount that i want to pay back the token that i want to use for the payback and the token that i want to pay back in this case it's both the same and if they are not the same within this method um, he assumes that the other token if they are not the same it assumes that this payback token is collateral in the um, um, because with token collateral um, is collateral in the vault and uses that to pay back and it must be DUSD collateral in the vault. Um, so I should actually call it with token or DUSD collateral. Um, so that's the first payback with the balance directly. Then do the same thing basically, um, but this time we get the collateral balances and on the one hand all use collateral to see what collaterals we have. And here I check if the collateral has DUSD. And if yes, um, I add the balances um, to this method again. So the amount of DUSD that I want to use to pay back and the token ID that I want to pay back. And again, iterate over that, use the same method. Um, but this time I have a difference between the token that I want to use to pay back, which is the DUSD and the token ID. I think we can, I can refactor that method later that I just have a flag there, use DUSD collateral or use token itself, because actually if they are not the same, it's the direct payback. Um, yes, and that's that we, we will look um, into this method in a second. Um, first, I want to quickly also go through this swapping stuff. Um, here again, I first get um, for all the loan tokens, the prices, so that I have the prices and don't have to check the price all the time. Um, so it's just same as I have it here in the um, payback, um, get validated interval prices, um, and place the prices, and then, yeah, do that. And also the pools, I check where I have gateway pools. Um, so through so all the pools that are affected with the connected to um, the tokens, I check if there's a D token and the other side is in the use collaterals, then it's a gateway pool and I have the gateway pools. And then, and that's something that I just do here, I'm not 100% sure, and that's for logging. Uh, we'll likely remove that um, in the, before it goes into production ready code, basically. Um, but yeah, I sort them by reserve. Not 100% sure if the sort order is correct <laughs> yet, honestly, but we'll. Yeah, that's something to check in um, future tests. And yeah, sorted that I used the uh, first, first use the collateral with the most liquid pool, so the le least um, slippage to get 
most of the stuff um, out um, and then continue with the other pools. Um, and then, yeah, for each of those gateway pools, I made a separate method payback with swapped collateral. Um, so collateral ID with the prices that USD token and cash and block transaction. And then um, this will be the, is already a, a bit prepared um, to yeah get this paths and everything. Um, so far, just a quick preparation. Uh, in here with this payback, with swapped collateral, I basically um, first iterate through it, as I said, go through all the um, token um, vaults, uh, loans in the vaults, and save if this token contains the collateral. So this is now for each of the collateral tokens itself. So this is now for this one collateral, we try to use as much of this collateral as possible to pay back the loans. Um, and yeah, if there is this collateral in the this ID, in the collaterals, then um, yeah, create this structure um, for each vault with the vault ID, with the usable collateral amount, with the total USD needed. Um, so it's just a sum for those, the used collateral amount that I actually use. And here have a vector for all the D token, the token amounts, so all the loans, um, amount and um, token ID and amount, and the USD value of this loan so that I can easily um, iterate over that. And yeah, here I just fill that up um, to say, okay, um, vault ID, um, user collateral amount um, is my, yeah, the balance, what amount of collateral I have in there. So that's the maximum usable amount. And then for each loan in there to create that, um, also with the USD price of this token to have the USD price that I need to use. And then um, basically sum up the total, as I said before, sum up total USD of what I need to do once this reverse calculation, get the pool, get the collateral and the reserves and the commission, and then do this logic based on this um, yeah, automated market maker um, calculation that's used in a swap. Um, yeah, basically calculate if this DUSD, this amount of DUSD should uh, should go out, what input do I need um, with the commission? And there's a lot of, because this all is based on coin calculation and everything, um, there's some, yeah, yeah, correcting terms regarding the multiplications and everything. Um, but in the end, that's just this calculations um, to get an estimated collateral per USD price um, because that's the needed input and then I divide it by the total USD that I had this estimated collateral by the USD price, which is with the max slippage now. So that's my first uh, estimation. And then I have this next estimate um, logic where I say, okay, current estimate, again, um, a loop over all the collateral to loans and say, okay, for the total USD needed in this vault, that's why I summed it up before, um, let's multiply this last estimate collateral by the USD. So if I you know, want to have all those USD, how much collateral do I need? That's my needed collateral. If this is less than my usable amount, I take the whole amount because I can swap for everything. If it's too much, um, or if it's uh, if I yeah if I would need more, um, I just put the used as a usable amount and sum up the total collateral used by summing up all this used collateral amount. Because this way I know how much collateral each vault is contributing to the total swap. And then I say okay, now I have a total used collateral, and now calculate the other direction. If I say if I put that in, that input in, um, how much output, how much USD would I get out? And the uh, improved estimation is now, yeah, the improved price where I say, okay, price is now likely a bit better because I maybe swapped less collateral in because I don't, I can't fill all the votes. If I can fill all the votes, it's the same price. But if I can't fill all the votes, um, I have less collateral that I use and therefore a better price because less slippage. Better estimation and therefore I say, okay, 
do one iteration and then do another iteration. And then it, that's my final number of collateral that I use in each vote. And now I create such a swap message um, from the contract address to the contract address, from the collateral ID to the DDoC, uh, DUSD ID. Um, amount is now zero and will be um, added now. And yeah, there is no max price. So no slippage protection because we want to swap. It's basically a market order. And now total collateral to swap just goes through all of them and take the used collateral amount, remove this collateral from the vault, add it to the balance of the uh, contract address so that the swap works because the swap needs an address to work on and um, yeah, set from to the total swap um, and execute this swap uh, here. And after the swap is executed, um, because and this is no pool, so it's a direct swap. There will uh, afterwards, if I improve that, there will be a list of pools um, for the composite swap. Um, now I did that, and afterwards I have a balance of DUSD in the contract address. And now again, iterate over all the loans, check how much DUSD belongs, and this is now this available DUSD times use collateral amount. Um, divided by total collateral swap. So this is my ratio, how much of this whole result belongs to this world. This amount is taken from the um, collateral to the, um, yeah, to the world collateral, uh, from the um, smart contract to the world collateral, um, at uh, world collateral subtract from the smart contract address. Um, and then for each loans with USD, for each of the loans, Payback with collateral. This um, result, and again, the result value that I have. Um, so this is the result value here. Um, payback as DUSD and payback this loan, and then reduce that. And so if it's not enough, this method will just jump out and say, "Okay, I'm done." If it's enough, it uses up all the stuff, and then here I have this result in the, um, yeah, if it's, if there's too much in there, I, um, yeah, subtract, uh, remove the, the excess and burn it uh, and add it to the burn address. So basically burn the excess if there is some iteration so that we don't have dust DUSD in the collateral. This is, yeah, up for discussion basically if you want to burn that or if it should stay in the vault, um, but yeah. Um, for now, I wanted to have clean um, results. Yes, um, that's basically um, this this part. And now the only thing that's um, left is this payback with loan and collateral. And I will go quickly through that because basically a lot of error handling. Um, only thing that's really happening is here if it's different. So if it's not the same um, loan token ID, payback ID, um, we use, it must be DUSD. So <laughs> only if it's not the same, it must be DUSD. And the payback ID needs to be um, DUSD. Get it from the collateral. And one special thing is if it's, if the current collateral amount is less than the payback amount, just use what we have left. So there's no error in this case so that I can use it outside even um, multiple times without having to track everything. And yeah, then get the price of the loan token um, and get the amount, amount, payback amount in loan token. So how much loan token this can pay back. And then there's this whole logic of the um, original loans, um, um, loan payback message with the interest calculation, get the amount of interest and everything um, and pay back the whole thing, um, subtract uh, if you, how much interest do you pay back, how much loan do you pay back. Um, yeah, so subtract loan token, decrease interest. And also this update of the minor reward, um, owner rewards and everything. If it's the same, um, do it one way. And if it's not the same, and burn the interest because interest rates is swapped to DUSD and burned. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, the, if it's um, this is if it's not the same, um, then it's directly 
uh, burned, the amount is directly burned. Subtract from the collateral and add it to the burn address. Yes, so that's basically it. That's the whole result <laughs> of this yeah, um, crazy time of the last days. I don't know how long it took, honestly. But never mind. Um, 30 minutes in, sorry, a long review video, but I hope um, it gave you a bit of an idea what topics I had to touch and um, what topics are still open. Um, yeah, as always, if you find something, tell me. If you have comments, tell me. If you watched the video, thanks. <laughs> um, I think this was a major step. I'm pretty happy that it worked out so far. Um, and I'm yeah, looking forward, or I'm pretty optimistic, say this way, to get it done in the next day um, or before the DFIP, the voting is over. But we will see. Um, and then anyway, um, right now it seems that the back and the core team is pretty busy with trying to get the current release out or the current update out. Um, so we will see um, how fast they react. So don't get your hopes too high, honestly, that it gets in soon because based on the current um, yeah, reply time and everything, I think this might take more time than some people expect. Even if I'm done with that, even if I get all the things, all the steps in, just to get the core team to review it and um, yeah, give it the final um, yeah, polishing and everything um, so that it gets production ready. I think this could take more time than people expect. So don't be too optimistic. But yeah, as I said, I want to give it a fair shot um, so that it has yeah, an, a possibility to get in soon. Um, but we will see. So with that, um, I will get back to coding and see you in the next video.